welcome to ICA so in this video what we are going to see about in the sense we are going to see about the Kerala Water Authority assistant engineer previous year question paper discussion so this exam was previously held on the 2016 so this is, uh, we are going to discuss about the civil engineering questions so we have to see what are the questions we came from the civil engineering concept the first question, hydrophobic cement is obtained by grinding the ordinary Portland cement clinger with. So what is meant by hydrophobic cement? So what is the hydrophobic cement? Hydrophobic cement, it is we can normally tell it as a water repellent cement. Hydrophobic cement is we can tell it as a water repellent cement. So this cement is, uh, this is a water repellent cement. This cement is we can use for to reducing the wetting ability of a cement grain. So we are we used to for reducing the wetting ability of a cement grain. So, so for that in normal OPC. So for getting a hydrophobic cement what we have to be doing in normal OPC cement clinger. So in this thing we have to be added some of the hydrophobic surfactants. So OPC, normal ordinary Portland cement, in this we have to be added some of the hydrophobic surfactants so, that is equal to the hydrophobic cement. Then only it can used for reduce the wetting ability. So what are the surfactants we are using? So one is the oleic acid. Boric acid and then steric acid. So these are the three surfactances we have to be added in the OPC, normal ordinary Portland cement clinger. So for getting the hydrophobic cement. So this cement is we can tell it as a water repellent cement. So we go to the question. What is the question? Hydrophobic cement is obtained by grinding the ordinary Portland cement clinger with water. So these three things are we are adding with the OPC. Oleic, boric and steric. So in your option hydrochloric, oleic acid, glycerin and acetone. So the answer is oleic acid. Second question. How much initial slum is required for a concrete mess? To be fluidized by plasticizer or super plasticizer. So how much initial slump? So what is meant by slump? It is to be required for our concrete mix. So how much amount? What is the slump? So it is the consistency of a fresh concrete. before it sets so before the setting process we have to check about the consistency of a fresh concrete that is called as the slump this slump can be tested by slum cone test this stem can be tested by slum cone test so from this slum cone test it mainly indicates uh, which one it indicates the water cement ratio so this is based on the water cement ratio only we have to be find out the slump so what are the types of slums will be there the first one we have to be says true slump so true slump in the sense what is the true actual slump we are getting do the test so actual value we are measured in this slum cone test second one zero slum and then collapsed and then shear slump shear slump is called as a Shear slump is called the result is incomplete. So at that condition we are telling as a shear slump. That means we have to be once again repeat the thing. So that is a incomplete is called as the shear slump. So zero slump and the collapsed is zero slump is a low water cement ratio and collapsed is a high water cement ratio. 
so this is based on the slump so our question is uh, how much initial amount of so that is based on the the slump cone the test we are using the apparatus slump cone so it is required for a concrete mix to be fluidized by the plasticizer or slope, uh, super plasticizer so the initial slump range is a 2 to 3 centimeter next ISO 8002007 limits the value of width thickness ratio of the elements of a steel section to place a check on. So with respect to the IS 8002007, so which limits the value of the which one is related with the steel section. So that is the bending buckling. The bending buckling in the sense if you are giving some load under a compressive loader, so what has happened? The beam will be bent. That is called as a bending buckling. Torsional uh, buckling in the sense it is twisting due to this load completely twisting will be there. Combination of both bending and the torsional that is called as twisting and also the bending will be happened that is called as the flexural torsional buckling. buckling. So what is our question the, which is related to the elements of a steel section that is called as the local buckling that is called as a local buckling. Extra. The shape factor of a square. So this is called as the square and then side A this is a diagonal. So with its diagonal parallel to the ZZ axis. So whenever the question comes the, di the square the diagonal parallel to the Z axis means we have to be considered that as a diamond. The shape is diamond. So what is the thing we have to be find out the shape factors. So what is the formula for shape factor? That is equal to plastic moment divided by yield moment. That is S is equal to ZP divided by ZE. So the section is the square with its diagonal parallel to the ZZ axis. Then we have to be considered this section as a diamond section. So this is base. This one is height. H by 2 and then we have to be fine this is a this is y and then y bar this is we are taking H by 2 okay so first thing is we have to be find out the plastic moment that is Z B is equal to A by 2 Y1 bar plus Y2 bar. So the area is B into H by 2. And then Y1 bar that is equal to Y2 bar. What is that? 1 by 3 into H by 2. That is equal to H by 6. Okay, we have to be find out the ZB, BH by 2, BH by 2 into 1 by 2, H by 6 plus H by 6. So that is equal to BH by 2 into 1 by 2 into 2 H by 6. 2 to cancel then bh squared by 12 that is equal to zb next ze that is i by y so y is a h by 2 for this section i is equal to bh cube divided by 48 then bh cube divided by 48 divided by h by 2 then it is equal to h 
into 24 that is equal to bh squared by 24. So what is the formula for shape factor? S is equal to Zb divided by Ze. Bh squared divided by 12. Bh squared divided by 24. That is equal to 24 divided by Bh squared. So S is equal to 2. So this is the question. So the shape factor of a square of side A with its diagonal parallel to the ZZ axis that is called as a 2. This is the answer. Answer is shape factor is a 2. Next. The strength of a 2 mm diameter. So the strength of a 2 mm diameter bolt of grade 4.6 for a single cover bud joint. For a single cover bud joint. The cover plate being 10 mm thick. And remaining values are assumed. Assume the steel of grade FE410 and FU410 MBA. For bolts of grade again 4.6 FUB400 MBA. And partial safety factor for the material. Gamma MBA is equal to 1.25. A net tensile tensor of a 20 mm diameter bolt A and B and then KB is equal to 0 0.5 in single shear. So actually it has a lengthy calculation but for our one more questions we have to be we have do not be go for a lengthy calculation. So we need first what is the thing the strength only we have to be need but is in a single shear in single shear. So, what is the formula for single shear? So, what does this mean? B D S B that is equal to A N B. That is equal to area. A and B is given. That is equal to area. F U B divided by root 3 into gamma M B. Right. So what is meant by A and B? That is called as a tensile area of the bolt area of the bolt and FUB that is called as the stress and then gamma MB is called as the partial safety factor. So what is the given is there A and B that is equal to 245 mm squared and FUB that is equal to 400 MPa. So our answer is in kilo Newton. So we have to be converted into kilo Newton 400 into 10 power minus 3 kilo Newton by mm squared and then gamma mb that is equal to what is the answer uh, given 1.25 then substitute vdsb is equal to 245 into 400 into 10 power minus 3 divided by 1.25 and a root 3. So if you calculate this one and then if you substitute all the values in the formula, if you calculate this one, we'll get the answer as 45.26 kilo newton. We'll get the answer as 45.26 kilo newton. Next. A minimum grade of concrete mix used for water retaining structures with alternating wetting and wetting and drying. So normally M20 is we can use for a plain concrete and then M30 is we can uh, use for a, a reinforced concrete. So we have question is which one is used for the water retaining structure that is called M25 that is a 
एम ट्वेंटी फाइव नेक्स्ट ए हूक ट्वेल्व एम एम डया मीटर इज एम्बर्डर्ड इन अंक्रीट फॉर ए डिस्टेंस ऑफ हंड्रेड एम एम कैलकुलेट द मैक्सीम लोड विच द हूक कैन हेरी इफ द बोन स्ट्रेस इज नोट टू एक्सीड द वन पॉइंट टू एट न्यूटन पर एम एम स्क्वयर्ड सो डया मीटर इज गिवेन एंड देन डिस्टेंस लेंथ इज ऑलसो गिवेन एंड वी हेव टू बी फाइंड अवट द मैक्सीम लोड वित् रेस्पेक्ट टू द बोन स्ट्रेस बोन स्ट्रेस इज गिवेन वी हेव टू बी फाइंड अवट द मैक्सीम लोड सो वाट इज द फॉर्मुला फॉर दट मैक्सीम लोड इज ईक्वल टू पै फाइव एल डी into tau bd so given pi as a diameter that is a 12 mm and then distance is given that is equal to 100 mm and then bone st stress is given that is 1.28 newton per mm square so there is no need of change the units all the values has the same units so we have to be directly substitute Twenty two by seven into twelve into hundred into one point two eight. So this is the maximum load. So we can substitute all the values we have been given. If you know the formula, you have to be directly substitute all the values, and then if you calculate, if you calculate, the answer will be coming. Four eight two five point two eight newton will be the answer if you calculate everything, and then we'll get the answer as a four eight two five point two eight newton. So in this, our answer is four eight two five newton is given. So. Thank you so much. So I hope you people will understand. So, so these are the previous questions. The exam has happened on the 2016s. So K W previous year question in civil part. Some of the questions we can discuss. Okay. Thank you.